tonight on Wild Chicago, we'll learn dating do's and don'ts and other valuable lessons when we visit J. Fred McDonald and the world's largest privately owned film archive. Hold our nose as we investigate the noxious and disgusting techie toys, inventors of squeezy beans and pull my finger Fred. Dine amongst the country's largest collection of Art Nouveau and Victorian antiques at Gulliver's Restaurant. Rev up our Vespas and Lambrettas as we hit the road with the renegades of Death Scoot 2000. Put our pooch in a different kind of daycare center and then travel back to the 1890s to play vintage baseball in Crown Point, Indiana. No gloves, no base stealing, no scratching. Well, at least you can still spit. Jeez, those were the good old days. Hi, I'm Will Klinger your host and video navigator on an urban adventure. Tonight, with our team of wild correspondents, we'll explore a side of Chicagoland you may not recognize. The offbeat side, the unusual, the eccentric, the frightening. Now, thanks to you and your many suggestions, we'd like to lead you to that part of the city we know as Wild Chicago. They sure don't play it like they used to, except for these guys, who with every trip to the plate, take a trip back in time. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's match between two fine club nines. From Deep River, we have the Deep River Grinders. And from Crown Point, the Mitros Magic. Joanna. Joanna, yes, it's me. Official scorekeeper for the Vintage Baseball League. Yes. This predates the game that we know of. Yes, but it's the beginning of the game that we know today. Uh -huh. The first rules were written down in 1858, and that's the rules that we play by. It's a gentleman's game. Well, you cannot spit. No spitting. No spitting, no scratching. No scratching? Scratching. No base stealing. Spiking? No spiking. It's a game for sissies, come on. No. You don't get to curse, you don't get to spit or scratch. Come on, those are part of the game, aren't they? We can do that as long as the umpire doesn't catch us. What if he catches you? Then it's a day's wages. Oh, really, so he finds you on the spot? Yes, a day's wages. What's that? Up to 25 cents. Striker is dead on the over round. One hand dead. By the way, you're not out, you're dead. How many hands dead means how many outs are in that inning. The positions had different names. The pitcher would be the hurler. Uh -huh. The uh, catcher is the behind. And the shortstop is the rover. The rover. The rover. He can play and if he's game. Irish, even the better, even eh? The better. These are our cranks, and that means they're our fans. So if you were playing in a prison yard, those cranks would be screws. Okay. Who's the guy in the top hat? Well, that's our umpire for the day. So you look like the guy from Monopoly. This is a gentleman's game and nothing like a fine cigar. Maybe something if you have a cough a little later on, you know, a little cough. And uh, what do you think the appeal is for these guys? Why, don't, why wouldn't they rather be playing the, the actual baseball that's played today? Well, the nice thing about this game is it's, you're just playing for the fun of it. You're not blood and guts and arguing and all that. You're out there having fun. You're playing, having the best time you can. Now, what's the deal with these uniforms? They didn't have zippers back then? Zippers? What's a zipper? Oh, so you're already in the period. You're pretending like we're in the 1850s. That's fine. I'll play along. What about the bats? They're all homemade? Most of them are all homemade, yes. There's no what they call bunting. And there's no gloves. And that, you know what? That ball looks kind of hard. I'm thinking you might have some serious calluses by the end of this game. No, usually broken fingers. You can actually catch a ball on one bounce and the guy's out, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Striker is dead on the bound, three hands. A foul tick, you swing at the ball and it, it goes 
back behind you towards the behind and he catches it in the air or on one bound, you're out. That's a foul tick. That has nothing to do with Lyme disease. No. It looks as if the, uh, the home team has quite a nice behind. That's quite correct, sir. It's one of the finest behinds in vintage baseball. And like a modern pitcher whose job is not to let them hit it, his job is to let them hit it. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> Wait a minute, I heard him say huzzah. It's huzzah in Crown Point. Huzzah! Uh, huzzah! What's the tally, ma'am? Two to two? They tally an ace rather than score a run. He would ask that your ace be tallied, and then I would say, yes, I will do that, sir. Please ring the bell. Ma'am, would you be so kind as to tally my ace for the Deep River Grinders, I'll please? I'll do that, sir, and you ring the bell, sir. I will try. Well done. Honorary vintage baseball player. All right. If we can find you a shirt, you'll be having one of our shirts on, too, today. You got a spare nickname you're not using? Oh, too tall. Oh, Stinky. He looks a little bit like the Hoosier Thunderbolt, does he not? The Hoosier Thunderbolt. The Hoosier Thunderbolt. Umpire, if somebody wants to find out more about vintage b-ball, maybe come out to a game, mm -hmm. what should they do? They should call area code 219-947-1958. Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> Hi, I'm Chogi Lim. Carnage, destruction, and pillage are three words not even closely related to these outlaws who take back the streets annually for three days of revelry on the streets of Chicago. Who are these guys? The renegades of Death Scoot 2000. Who is the leader of this group? What's your name, sir? Ryan Bastinelli. And what is your group here today? Uh, second to last scooter club. What would be the last scooter club? Um, just anybody else's club. Now, it's obvious that you guys are rebelling against something in society. What would that be and why? Donuts. They're bad for you. Lots of cholesterol. Vespas and Lambrettas, those are the different types of scooters? Mm -hmm. Right. That's a uh, bunch of Vespas here. A Lambretta on the back of the truck. And we got people here from Minneapolis. There's going to be people coming from Toronto, all coming up for the rally this weekend. Piaggio is the uh, parent company. They created the Vespa. So Piaggio is the, uh, the mark. Uh, Vespa is the brand. Where are we going to go today? Uh, today we're heading down, I believe, uh, Morris, Illinois. Somewhere, I haven't got a clue where it is. I'm from Canada, so. This one's a, actually it's a Yamaha Riva 200. I stripped down, added a, a motorcycle headlight and um, an air horn that plays Dixie. I'm familiar with CCs. Do these things have any? This one's a 200 CC. I think mean, it goes about 80. Is this? model in compliance with the stringent government standards for air pollution control? Well, for 1968 it is. <laughs> well, even more importantly, is this model in compliance with the standards for having fun? It exceeds completely. Now, you look like you have two X chromosomes. How do you feel about the term biker chick or scooter chick? Does it hit you well? I think that I'm a tough mama, so I'm driving the Yamaha with the green seat, the gaffer's tape seat. Are you rebelling against anything in society? Cotton candy, because it rots your teeth and it does this to your teeth, so... I was checking myself out in my mirror and leaned over and burnt my leg against the muffler, so... So vanity and scooting don't go together. So how much would you pay for something like this? I paid $1,500, but I'm sure it's worth a little bit more than that. Vespa or Lambretta? Vespa, all the way. You still talk to your parents? Yep. They're aware of what you're doing? Yes, they are. I'm the current chairman of Second to Last, and I ride a 1980 P200. What's your mission statement for the group? Ride as often as you can, you know, as long as you're on two wheels. We do have certain rules that you do have to abide by, you know, one, you have to have a scooter, and two, you have to show up for the meetings. So if you, uh, if you don't keep up those two things, yeah, we have to kick you out. And we're not trying to be someone who we're not. Do you guys ever drive by certain neighborhoods that gave you trouble and kind of honk your motors or something kind of loud? You can probably see that we're pretty tough. Where are we going today? Do you know? Uh, someplace out by Joliet. Have you ever got into an accident? Um, not really, no. 
else went down? Uh, well, Jesse's got no clutch lever. Or Almost, almost no front brake lever. Is a prison guard cool? How did this minor accident where three people almost got killed just happen? I know somebody turned left in front of the pack, and then everybody stopped, and I couldn't stop fast enough. Right, but apparently you're okay, huh? I'm a little road rash. I put it together last Saturday. My wife's gonna kill me. So if people want to get more information on how to get some scooters or ride with you guys, where would they go? They could call Mo at 773-836-8019 or take a look at twostrokebuzz.com on the web. Okay, let's go! Doggy daycare, camp canine, playtime for pooches, Call it what you will, it's an idea whose time has come. Come on, come on, come on. Hi, what is your name? Amy Robinson. Now what goes on here? Really the focus of the daycare aspect of this place is for exercise and socialization with other dogs. Can two dogs reserve a cage for two uh, if they need it? Well, if they live together at home, yeah, they can live together here, but we don't. You don't encourage dog sex, is that what you're saying? No. How many dogs are in the house here? We'll have about 20 total today. The daycare is a really fun thing, and it enables people to get the guilt off their shoulders. So it's really rewarding for me to have people go to work and not feel guilty about leaving their dog home all day. Plus, the dog's not destroying the house. He's here destroying my house instead. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? Brittany Spaniel. Yeah. A handsome looking puppy. You ever get jealous of, of Amy and her business yeah, here? I always wonder if she's gonna remember me. Oh, is there a, a dog psychologist on staff here, do you think? <laughs> I don't think so. What, what is it about that toy that they like, that squeeze toy? Well, actually, it's... Um, Besides the fact that it's a chicken leg. It squeaks as if it was something that they killed. You know, I hate to say it, but it, it's, it brings out the prey instinct in a dog. And that's and, good? Well, it's natural. Maura, climb. Just climb. Whoa. Maura's the greatest dog. She's just the best dog. She's, she's your dog. She's every dog. Amy, what do you uh, say to people who say you're discriminating against cats and other house pets here? <laughs> well, I like cats, but they're no dogs. Yip, 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 yip. I, I think that as far as having an intelligent conversation with, uh, you know, an adult, it's a little difficult at this point. <laughs> Do you just let them out at random, or? Oh, no. This is a carefully chosen group. These are all rowdy dogs. Every male that's out here is neutered, which makes them get along with other males better. I guess gardening is sort of out of the question, huh? Um, pretty much, yeah. Get the ball checkers. Uh -oh. Woo! Do you, do you meet a lot of men here on the job? Huh? Um, no, actually. Most of the men that come are married, and uh, it's not a place to meet men. We're isolated here. I mean, our neighbors are the Salvation Army. You live a celibate life. <laughs> no, Just but... you and the dogs. I love these dogs, though. They're really fun. You so. almost have to. Right. Amy, if somebody needs doggy daycare or training, what do they do? They should give us a call at 281-5577, and we'll tell them all about it. <laughs> Quiet. Bright idea. Enjoy the Linguini and the Luminaria at this Howard Street fixture. Hi, Wild Chicago. Fine, thanks. A pleasure. Jerry Freeman. And where are we, Jerry? We're in Gulliver's. My passion is food and the avocation is antiques. Are you going to be seating someone or can you show us around? I'll give you a few moments, of course. What you're looking at is the largest collection of Art Nouveau and Victorian antiques in the United States. This fixture here is an arts and crafts fixture done probably 1915 to 1920. Art Nouveau chandelier 1915. Very, very rare low shades, Austrian. Done around the turn of the century. How many chandeliers would you say you have, Jerry? 
probably 340, 350. And your electric bill monthly is approximately? With the air conditioning, about $5,000 a month. Steuben gold or green shades, actually made with real gold. In what part of the process is the gold applied? That I really don't know. Well, lie. What? Lie. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kidding, Jerry. As you can see, there's a lot of terracotta here. I love architectural things. Fantastic. The majority of the fixtures here I bought from estate sales, architectural auctions, and private people. This piece here came from a fireplace in Milwaukee. It's copper, and it was done probably 1880 to 1890. This is a very fine bronze piece, 1870-1880. And this is a late 1990s uh, baby? Yeah. I also have another lady's room on the other side that's very interesting, if you'd like to see it. Yes, I would. <laughs> and if you run some water, I'll probably use it. Here's a couple of fabulous pieces it's from a turn-of-the-century drugstore. I think I should not. If there's going to be a fire, which piece are you grabbing? Oh, God. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start. She's a lady over five feet tall. Can you imagine somebody carved that out of one piece of granite? That's incredible. This is a cast iron piece done around 1880, 1890. Do you rub the nipple for good luck? Occasionally. <laughs> That's what we do in my house. <laughs> I knew I wanted to do a great and unusual outdoor cafe. It took me a year of intensive searching to seek everything out. You ever had a near accident with one of those chandeliers? <laughs> <laughs> it happens occasionally with the tall waiters around here. <laughs> I bet. How long you worked here? Um, I've been here over a year. Good tips? Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> what do you sell most? The pizza is the most popular. How many pizzas would you say you serve here a day? On the weekends, sometimes we'll put out as many as five to 800 pizzas a night. We deliver everything on the menu in a big radius. We have homemade pastas, a big Italian menu, great Mexican food, American dishes, a bevy of wonderful homemade food. When I first started out, I was a one-room pizzeria. My dream was to build a great food emporium and an antique emporium. And I think I'm on the way. There is no more space left. When do you say no? Well, there's always room for something good. If people want artichoke dip and architectural delights, where do they go? They go to Gulliver's, 2727 West Howard Street, Chicago. Phone number? 773-338-2166. Just off Hollywood Avenue, you will find a former pop culture professor who claims to have the largest privately owned film archive in the world. Step inside his place of business, and you probably won't argue. Mr. McDonald. Yes, sir. How are you? This is not your home. It's just your office, right? Well, it's my studio. It's uh, more than an office. It's a library, archive, home away from home, but I don't live here, no. There's film everywhere. How many films do you, would you estimate you have in this building? In terms of millions of feet, I would guess 20 million feet of film. And where does it mostly date from? <clears throat> well, mostly is the... 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Black Jack Horner in a corner, don't go nowhere. What do I care? Your kisses, my dear, are worthwhile reaching for. <laughs> How did you get started collecting all this stuff? Well, I started out as a professor at Northeastern Illinois University. I had to have materials to write books, research, and teach classes. So I started buying film on the used film market. And it just got a little out of hand, apparently. <laughs> you keep your film. You don't sell this stuff. You just loan it out. We lease videotape portions of it to people Such like, as? Ken, like Ken Burns. He has a new jazz series. We, we sold a lot of footage to Ken Burns. We sell to all the networks. One of our largest consumers is the BBC. We have uh, old newsreels. We've got outtakes, 35,000 TV commercials we have. 
making love to that television. It's almost, it's very romantic. This is an interesting, Zoysa Z Chicago is a pre-World War II Polish feature film about a Polish woman in, in Chicago, and it's in Polish. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there's not a lot of demand for that one. All these cans of films, and I could pick anything on here and you could identify it and tell me what it was? Uh, yes, probably could. Some well, of these cans look like ancient relics. These come from a man who, uh, who died many years ago, but he was a Chicago filmmaker in the 1940s. And he, his biggest expedition was a, to drive a Dodge from Washington, D.C. to the tip of South America. It wasn't until I tried to push our car up a 25% grade, nearly three miles in the air down there, that I found out how puny I was. What do you think is most in demand of your collection? African-American things. Not fun with parakeets, apparently. <laughs> My name is Tom. My hobby is raising and training parakeets. A couple of neighborhood youngsters were just given a young bird. I told them I'd help them get started with their new pet. Is there anything that people bring in that you say, no thanks, I, I really have enough of that? Never. Or, Never. Ne never. never refuse anything. I have an old home movie of myself and my family at Virginia Beach. Now, would that be something? Oh, home movies are a big collector. Yes, big, big item. Well, you know, I think my uh, Virginia Beach home movie could be a cautionary film about sun poisoning. Here's a Piper Laurie collection. And they did a feature for Sorry on Piper Laurie, and those are the outtakes. Piper, how do you think you would feel if you won the Academy Award? Oh, I think it would be divine. I think it would be terrific to win something. Have you ever won anything? Never. Never. Not even a turkey. This was uh, probably one of the first sound cartoons ever used in a political campaign. It's from 1936. It was put out by the Republicans to ridicule the New Deal of Franklin Roosevelt. The visitor has hitched his donkey to the platform. But it's not a donkey after all. It's the New Deal jackass. Obviously, it, it didn't work all that well since the Republicans lost in a landslide. Down here, you find uh, a lot of educationals. You find a lot of corporate films. Corporate film? How about sex role development? See, already the name High Teen would throw off alarm bells in our day and age. How do you choose a date? There's Betty. And yet, it just doesn't seem as if she'd be much fun. What about Anne? She knows how to have a good time. Fred McDonald, if somebody's got a piece of film that they think you might be interested in, uh, what should they do? Give me a call at 773-267-9899. Coming soon on Wild Chicago, a kayak tour through downtown, outrageous artist Frank Woods, an aggressive scavenger hunt, Indiana's rotating jail, and a dinner train through the Wisconsin woods. Hi, it's me, Dick O'Day, with another fabulous find. Behind this gentle facade lies the home of some of the most noxious, disgusting, fabulous toys. Come on, let's find the secret lab of techie toys. <laughs> You are? I'm Jamie Wirt from Techie Toys. Welcome. Okay, let's go see the toys. This is Techie Toys. Welcome to the Techie Toys office. Come on in. Okay, let's get a shot of this sign. This is good. Oh, did you want to come in? Okay. So let's talk about the toys. Let's see them. Okay, well, uh, first of all, we got uh, Pull My Finger Fred, which is out on the market right now. He's on Amazon.com, as well as uh, Spencer Gibbs. Wait, 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 before this, who inspired you to create Fred? Oh, okay, that was... Uh, the real Fred. That was my Uncle Roland. Uh, did somebody step on a duck? Fathers would say to their son, hey, son, pull my finger. And the rest is history. <laughs> okay, so this is big in Florida. All right, let's go on. Okay, who's here with you today, Jamie? Well, we got uh, Mark McClain who's a resident voice guy, Jeff Bevington, who's uh, my co-creator and uh, the creative director for Techie Toys. These are some of the sketches that we started out with. This was probably the first drawing of Fred. We um, have a lot of the different devices that go inside him, as along with uh, eyeballs and the different fabrics that uh, make up the doll, so that whatever we come up with in our crazy... Mr. Head. Potato Head Fred. Mr. Potato Head Fred. Okay. Then we got prototypes. I'm with you. We got, uh, this the, is the very what? first one. The head's supposed to go like this. Prototype number two. 
He's like little Frankenstein Freddy. Yeah. The mummy it, Freddy. That's right, you got it. <laughs> the mummy. These two prototypes here didn't come out too well. From there, we get to uh, the actual final Fred over here. And we actually have the guy who does the noises over we here, have right? The guy right over here, Mr. Okay. Mark McClain. Okay. Mm, fruity. But you gotta have the fart. Wait. That's a load off my mind. Oh, you got some on me. Yes. Oh. When we put the box together. We had to have something to put on both sides of the box. So I came up with some little bean cartoons. The squeezy beans. And this is the sound they make. Each one of these beans is a specific type of legume. They're our navy bean. All hands on the poop deck. Oh, boy, it's the village people bean. There we go. Fire in the hole. Torpedoes <laughs> are OK, the gay and lesbian task force is going to love this one. Oops, and I was pooping. I like that one especially. <laughs> Oops and Iva Popin. There you go. Yeah. Like yeah, that. OK. So you're, you're getting away from the cruder, looter toys to something a little classy. The softer side of techie toys, All right, let's see it. that. Let's see sure, that. Sure, that's Hip Hop Teddy Friend. A hip hop rapping bear. And this is the way he works. Yo, I'm Hip Hop Teddy Friend. Tell me your first name. <clears throat> Jamie. I'm soft and cuddly and filled with love. This is the trouser snake. Mm. I'll sing my hip hop song. Come on, sing along. It's one of the first prototypes of hip hop Teddy Friend that was made. But he doesn't hip hop or anything. No, no he, he just, just sits there. Oh, okay. All right. So what else do we got? This toy uh, we Mark and I made for uh, a toy manufacturer over in China. Okay, Jamie, if somebody wants to find out more information about Pull My Finger, Fred, Hip Hop Teddy Friend, what do they do? You can go to pullmyfinger.net, that's pullmyfinger.net on the net, or call 312-986-8877, Techie Toys. Great, go ahead, guys, pull my finger. Is this your commentary in Wild Chicago? <laughs> it's been fun to be on educational television. Will and the Correspondents will be back next week with another exploration into wild Chicago. But in the meantime, 